Most of the time I want to be showing you guys the different plugins and the different cool things that people have built out in the world that can alter our gameplay or alter the features of our Rust server. But in doing so, I've actually left out some features that are built right into the game that a lot of people don't know about and definitely a lot of people don't know how to use. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can change this, what you're used to seeing in Rust, into this or even into this. All with very simple commands of which I'm going to show you a complete list of everything that you can do and change. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to hopefully show you the different things that you can do on your servers to make your server just a little bit better than everybody else's. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. And today we're going to be working on Rust's built-in weather system. So during the update that happened about November-ish of 2020, it was the same update where they added the horse stable to the default procedurally generated map. They also went through and did a whole bunch of changes to the weather system. Now there's a couple of reasons why they did that. Obviously the first one is server performance. So the built-in weather system that Rust has can devour resources if you're using a lot of different weather systems. You will have noticed in the past if you've been around Rust for a long time they actually took out rain because of the effect that it was having on server performance or more importantly the client's performance that was connected to that server. So they got rid of rain altogether or at least the visuals of rain. I guess the mechanics of it were still there. Anyways that doesn't matter. In November of 2020 they revamped the weather system completely 100%, which gives us as the server owners way more control over each individual feature of the weather system. They also gave us a bunch of pre-built weather systems that we can trigger on our servers. So that's the section where we're going to start and then I'm going to get into the cool stuff near the end of the video. One thing that I need to point out right away is we can use these weather commands in different places and have the same functionality. So as you can see here, I have my iced host dashboard on the left hand side right here. The same commands that I'm going to be using on this dashboard, I could also be using using in the F1 console, but there's a small change that we have to make if we're going to be using it in the in-game console. But I'll go over that difference in just one second. I'm just going to show you a couple of things in here and then we're going to switch to the in-game console. We'll do everything in the console going forward. So the first thing that I want to show you is weather.report. If we run that weather report, it's going to give us the current conditions of the server right now. So as you can see here, my previous weather system was clear. My current weather system is also clear and up next I have clear. So I'm going to be clear for the next couple of days. So all of this, you see here is what's part of the dynamic weather system that's already built into your Rust server. And if you run this report during different weather systems that are going through your server, you're going to see that these numbers are going to change. You can also change these variables. So if we're doing a side by side comparison where I can show you my dashboard as well as my server, you can see that I can make these changes in real time. So as you can see by my current weather report, wind is one, rain is one and thunder is one. This means there's a 100% probability that these events are going to happen. So if we do weather.wind and reduce that to zero, it's going to get rid of all of the wind. We can also do the same thing for rain. So weather dot rain down to 0% probability, it's going to get rid of the rain. So as you can see on my game, you can see that the rain has just gone away. Hopefully you guys can see that and it's not too small. Weather dot fog, we're going to reduce that to zero as well and see what happens. And you can see it instantly clears up my game. The wind is gone. The rain is gone. The fog is gone. Everything looks good. Now I have a clear day. I'm going to put all of the different weather variables that you can change down in the video description down below. In fact, I'll even set it up so that all you have to do is copy that line, paste it into your console, and it's going to take that effect. So before we get into actually playing with the actual atmosphere and changing how things look, let me show you a couple of the different built-in dynamic weather systems that all we have to do is trigger. So for this, I need you guys to actually be able to see my F1 console. So I had to get rid of my overlays. I know it looks a little bit boring, but it's probably closer to what you guys are used to seeing anyways. So for this, we're going to be loading weather systems. So we're going to use weather.load and then whatever weather system we want to use. Also, if you do weather report in your F1 console, it's going to come up the exact same way as it did if you were doing it in your host's console. So as you can see here, we have a very clear sunny day, no clouds, no rain, no nothing. Let's say we wanted to change this into a dusty style weather system. So to do that, we would do weather.load. So we're loading a weather system. So weather.load space dust. And as you can see there, it's no longer as clear as it was before. And you can see dust off in the distance there and you can see dust all over my screen. So it's not really windy or anything like that, but you can definitely see that dust in the air. I know you've all seen this happening in a rust server before, but maybe you didn't know why. And if you wanted to go back to a clear day, you would just do weather.load clear. I have to spell load correctly, weather.load clear. And there you go. You can actually see it like fade away. The dust is fading away and it's becoming that clear day that we had before and everything looks good. So we can do weather.load fog if we want to have a foggy day and immediately it changes everything over to the dark and gloomy fog. But then you can combine that with the feature that I showed you at the beginning where you can actually change the amount of each 
each one of these things. So if we go into our iPhone console and type weather.report, you can see the different aspects of this weather system that is preloaded when we loaded that weather system. So as you can see here, the fogginess is at 0.09. So let's say that was a little bit too heavy for us and we wanted to cut that in approximately half. So we can do weather or you would think that we could do weather.fog and change that to 0.5 or something like that. But this is where the difference comes in between using your host's dashboard console versus your in-game F1 console. So at the beginning of this line, we want to add an SV space weather dot fog, whatever the intensity is that we want for our fog to be. So in this case, we're going to do SV space weather fog 0.5. I don't know if you've seen that happen with my console in the way, but it did reduce the fog in about half. Here, let's do it like this. I'm just going to change it to 100% density. So super foggy. And I'm going to change it to 25% density. There you go. Drastic difference just by making those changes. So let's just do another one here real quick before I move on to the next section. So let's change this weather system to the built in storm system that Rust has. So weather load storm and it brings in the entire features of the storm so we've got some wind we've got some rain we've got some lightning i haven't seen any lightning yet but it will definitely happen it's cloudy it's foggy and we did that we triggered that by loading that weather system so if we load this weather report you can see all of the different features of this weather system that's currently going on right now so i'll put the default weather systems in the video description down below you can just pick one and load one and you can decide how you want to alter it after you've loaded it i think there's seven of them i'm pretty sure there's seven of them. Another thing that we can control is how wet the player is going to get when they're in the rain. So as you can see here, I have my completely clear day, but I've turned on the rain. By default, the wetness of the rain is at 0.4. So just as I'm standing here, you can see I'm about 10%. Can you see that? Yes. You can see I'm about 10%, 11% wet, 12% now. So let's say that we wanted to change that so that it was higher. So we go into our console, we type SV space weather dot wetness underscore rain, and let's change this to one instead of the 0.4 that it is by default. So as you can see there, my wetness jumped up and it will eventually take me all the way up to 100% wet. So I'm basically soaking wet just because it's raining outside. You can also have this same effect on snow. You know, when you're in the snowy area, you can change how wet the snow will get you if you stay in the snow. So I'm just going to change this to daytime and I'm sure it's going to screw up my weather system here, but we'll see what happens. So it's still raining and my wetness is still gaining. So because I set my rain wetness to one or 100%, it's going to take me all the way up to 100% wet, which of course will then trigger my coldness, which is going to make it so that I die faster. So let's just change that back here real quick. So SV space weather dot wetness underscore rain, and we're going to change it back to 0.4. So we should see that number going down. Yeah, it's going down real quick. And my coldness is also going down. So that's good. It should go all the way down to 40% because we just set it to 0.4. So we'll just go over to the snow biome and let's just check things out over here. So let's do SV space weather dot wetness underscore snow. So by default, the wetness of the snow is 20%. If we change that to one or 100%, as you can see, my wetness in the snow is skyrocketing very, very quickly and my coldness is also skyrocketing. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because you can change the risk factors for your players for being in these different areas. If you wanted to make it so that people never go outside when it's raining, you could very easily increase the amount of wetness that's applied the longer they stay outside. So right now I've only been in the snow for a couple of minutes, like maybe two minutes, and I'm at 100% wetness and I'm at minus 38 degrees Celsius cold. If I didn't have God mode on, I would die quickly. In fact, let's have a look. I'm just going to turn my God mode off. And as you can see, it's not looking good for me. My lens is all freezing over. Like I'm going to die super, super fast. I've actually never seen this before. I've never been hundred percent wet at minus 38 degrees in like the last 15 seconds I've dropped. Like, look at, look at my health drop and it's, it's killing me fast. So like, think about that in a real world application. If you wanted to make it so that the snow was super dangerous to live in or hunt in or gather in, then you could change these features just for the the snow. It's all about being able to create that environment that works for your server and most importantly works for your players. Now obviously 100% wetness in the snow is incredibly extreme so be careful with this. If it works for your server great but just know that that's a really extreme setting. All right so the weather systems that's all well and good however a lot of people are going to be watching this video because you want to be able to change what the atmosphere looks like. You've seen it on some plugins I'm sure. I've definitely done a tutorial on a plugin that messes with the atmosphere and stuff like that and makes the rust world look really cool. Cool. I don't know if it's actually cool or if it's just different. Therefore, it must be cool. I'm not sure. All right, so let's go into our F1 console and let's just type weather.atmosphere and see what comes up 
for default options. So the one that you've seen at the beginning of this video, I was messing with the brightness of the atmosphere. So we can do weather.atmosphere underscore brightness. And the default value of that is set at minus one, which means that there's no modifications done to that setting. And it's completely controlled by whichever weather system is using it. So the weather systems might make minute changes to the atmosphere, probably so little that you don't even notice it, but it just adds that ambiance, you know? So if we wanted to be extreme with this, we could do weather.atmosphere underscore brightness, and we can change this to zero but because we're changing a variable here we're going to do an sv at the very beginning so sv space weather dot atmosphere underscore brightness and we're going to change the brightness of this to zero so there you go that's what it looks like that's what your rust server would look like with the atmosphere set to zero brightness so everything else looks 100 normal in fact you can see the snow better than you ever would normally and the daylight is technically still there it's just making the atmosphere completely dark that's at 25 percent that's at 50 percent you start not noticing it very much 75% and that's at 100% which is just normal but I do know that there's server owners out there that want this visualization on their servers I just know that there is make sure you leave me a comment in the comment section down below so that I know that you've been looking for how to do this another really huge benefit of being able to change these different variables on our rust servers is for cinematics so depending on the type of server that you're running a lot of people are actually doing a cinematic movie or recording raids or whatever it happens to be some people just enjoy making straight up movies in their rust servers i've seen people set up actors plots scenes everything like that so being able to have that kind of control over your environment can be very powerful there's also the extreme factor there's also the i want to be different from everybody else factor so maybe my showing you this isn't necessarily a good thing because then everybody might want to do it i'm not really sure but anyways i've had people asking me how to do this so i needed to show you how to do it now what i've shown you on this video isn't everything that you can change within your weather system i'm going to put all of the details of as many things that i can think of in the video description down below. I just wanted to give you a really quick overview of maybe the most commonly used features of the weather system that people don't even necessarily know are there. So if you find this type of information useful, you got to leave me one of these. Plus, you need to leave a comment down below. It's the only way that I know that you guys are appreciating this type of information. I love being able to show you plugins, but this type of stuff is also very cool. All right, that's it for today's video. Remember, I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. All of the information for this video is going to be in the description down below. I'm also going to try and break this up into chapters for you too, so you can come back to different sections. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you guys next week.